At the foot of the 15,000-foot summit of Pikes Peak lies Pikes Peak International Raceway, a 1.3-mile, nine-turn roval configuration, a track that has a short but very sweet history with NASCAR, the IRL, and now Grid Life Touring Cup. My name is Kyle Heyer, joined by Tom O'Gorman for GLTC race number one of Alpine Horizons weekend here for Grid Life Festival. Tom, so excited to get this underway. This track always races amazing. Last year, our first race was in the dark. This time, we get to see what's happening. The drivers do, too. I'm super excited. This is going to be awesome. It is wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, 15-minute sprints coming at you. This is race one of four. So if you think this is fun, it's going to get even better throughout the entire weekend. And we have a lot of new faces here at Grid Life Alpine Horizon for this weekend's GLTC races. We saw how it unfolded last year, but a number of new faces have already come in and upset the apple cart in qualifying. They certainly did. Brian Heitkotter is a new driver this season with the Chris Forsberg Racing Nissan 370Z on pole with a 101.8, one of the quickest laps we've ever seen here in GLTC. But before we get too deep, let's have a look here at the track map for Alpine Horizon, Pikes Peak International Raceway. 1.3 miles here, Tom. It's nine turns. It's sort of simple in some ways, but there are challenges lurking here. There certainly are challenges, especially when you cram this much into just over a minute lap. So the start-finish line is at the top of your screen. We stream through turns one and two. That's on the NASCAR circuit. Here we call it turn one. And right about where the blip on the map is, right there, there's a giant bump. It really upsets the cars, but you can go five, six wide through there in GLTC cars if you want. Then a good run down the back straightaway into a quick kink at turn two, heavy braking zone down into turn three into the infield section, and these are basically second, maybe third gear hairpins, quick drag race between turns three and four, a lot of runoff on the exit of turn four, but then some really tricky chicanes and big curbs to hop through turns five, six, seven, and eight before you got to get her back up onto the banking for the run out of turn nine. That is absolutely critical because you're spit right back out onto that banking for one more lap. And, and basically you're on throttle all the way from turn nine all the way to the entrance of turn three, so you're on throttle for basically half the lap around here at Pikes Peak International. National Raceway. 15 drivers qualified for our first run of the weekend here, Tom. Uh, and once we see them pull out of the racetrack, we'll run through the order. But Brian Heitkotter, I mentioned uh, earlier today in practice, he ran without his wing, figuring, hey, this is a power track. You're going straight a lot of the lap. Let's try running wingless. I went down there and talked to him. He said he put the wing back on for qualifying, and it was a huge difference. Wing was the way to go. He's put it back on for the race. And then right alongside him will be Jeremy Swenson, who has absolutely had flashes of brilliance throughout this season. That is a, a multi-time race winning car here this season in Grid Life Touring Cup. It's a bright purple Corvette, C5 Corvette, uh, one of the first of, of that style build. He makes almost the same power all the way through his power band. It's super fast off of any kind of corner, uh, handles well as well, but it is on the heavy side. And what we expect of these two heavy cars on the front row to kind of fade just a little bit, which plays into our third place qualifier's hands maybe just a little bit. Yeah, that's Joel Morrison, the number 71, Nine Lives Racing Honda S2000. Uh, that car is a four-cylinder. It uh, we I think you said it was K-swapped, but uh, that car has certainly got a lot less motor than the others around him, but he was really consistent when he ran in qualifying earlier. 103, 103 103. So I don't think he's going to be a factor right at the uh, the offset of this race, but lap six, seven, eight, nine. I think Joel Morrison's coming for him. Yeah, the big challenge for Joel is going to be getting a good jump at the start because he is, as you mentioned, we're flat out basically from start finish all the way around the NASCAR Speedway uh, down into the infield. That's a long time to be a little bit down on power, and he will be a little bit down on power to the next couple of cars on the grid. The first being Justin Kelly. He qualified in fourth spot, very close to Joel Morrison's times, but that is a J35 V6 swapped uh, Scion FRS. That car is going to make a little bit more grunt, maybe, maybe more similar to Brian Heikotter's car that's on pole. And then just behind them, Eric Jensen and Stephen Cox are a pair of V8s, one in an FRS chassis and one in another C5 Corvette. So Joel's challenge is going to be not getting swallowed on that start. The best of club racing. If you ask yourself, what makes pro racing? Is it good drivers? We have that. Is it a broadcast? You're watching it right now. Is it <laughs> photographers and a lot of media? Guess what? We're at a festival with thousands of people. This is essentially what pro racing is, except we get to do it with these attainable cars that everybody can relate to, and it's just spectacular. Well, very excited to be back at Al Pine Horizon, a Grid Life Festival for 2021. Uh, grid order here on row number one, Brian Heitkotter alongside Jeremy Swenson. Then it's going to be Joel Morrison in the Nine Lives Racing S2000. That's a black and green S2000. Justin Kelly in a black and red Scion FRS to his left. Row three, Eric Jensen, a black and red Scion FRS. LS swapped. He's the 184 car. Stephen Cox in a red, white, and black Corvette. Then Jeremy Boysen in an Acura RSX. Jake Jornstad in another S2000 alongside him starting eighth. Ninth place, Felipe Gonzalez, similar to Jake's car, the number 12. Tiffany Kelly in an S2000 J35 swap, number 68. Then Nick 
Nick Steneford, he's pretty local, might be a little bit racy on the start with that white S2000 there you see leave the frame alongside Colton Wade in a BMW E46 M3 starting 12th. Bill Griffin starts in 13th in the number 46, and Brian DeFries, he had his drain plug fall out earlier in the 898, so hopefully that car holds together. Jorge Ortiz rounds out the rest of the field. Field coming out of turn number nine, climbing up onto the banking. 2005 was the last year the Indy Racing League ran on the banks here at Pikes Peak International Raceway, but there's a new series in town, and I'm really excited to bring you Grid Life Touring Cup from Alpine Horizon at Pikes Peak International Raceway. Green flag flies, and we're racing at PPIR. Three wide at the start, Jensen up the inside, three wide under the banking, Swenson high, Jensen low, Heidkotter in the middle. Wow, look at the field through the bump right there. Jer Eric, uh, sorry, not Eric, uh, Eric Jensen, that is a heck of a start in the black and red FRS. Jeremy Swenson, no, nowhere really around the outside. They're three wide. Justin oh, Kelly up oh. the inside. They're going to touch door handles. No, they're clean down in the braking oh. zone. Swenson around the outside. That was really tight. Locking up the brakes is Jeremy Boyce into the background, but double wide. Jensen loses the lead to, lead to Swenson at the exit at turn number three. He pulls ahead of the Viking Performance Corvette. Now side by side is Brian Heitkotter, but he doesn't quite have overlap, so he'll have to tuck in behind Jensen. The V6 loses out to the V8s at the start. We have a pair of V8s at the front. Heitkotter pushes Jensen along the exit of turn number four. Jeremy Swenson is getting away after outbreak for the lead. Now they pound through the curbs. Heitkotter all over him. Swenson, or uh, sorry, not Swenson. That is Kelly just behind. Wow, fantastic start by Jensen, but he's struggling now. His Heitkotter's all over him at the exit of turn nine, trying to get overlap as they come up onto the banking. It's V8 versus V6 as they climb up onto the front straightaway here at PPIR. Justin Kelly behind the uh, J35 FRS streamlining through Swenson at 104.4 first lap down. And they were nearly three wide for fifth place just behind, but Joel Morrison did a pretty good job not getting swallowed up too much. They're side by side in the middle of your screen. That's the black and white R SX alongside Tiffany Kelly, who's had a pretty good start from back in 10th. She's up battling for 6th, I think that is. There they are, and followed by one of the other Myriad cars. That's probably Felipe Gonzalez, because there is no tape on the windshield. Yeah, down into the braking zone now for turn number 3. Still tight for 2nd place. Jensen got a boot from uh, Brian Heikotter. A little bit of contact there in the background. Some of the Myriad cars scattering car off the racetrack. It's Jeremy Boysen. He missed the braking zone and just ran wide in that Acura RSX. Couldn't get it turned in, but now this battle for 2nd place is really heating up, and these guys have to be careful because they're losing so much time to Jeremy Swenson, look how gone he is. Yeah, Jensen has a new rear end ratio, shorter gearing in this car, or actually I should say, uh, it's, yeah, no, it's longer gearing rather. It's a four speed transmission, so maybe that's hurting him in the digs out of these corners. Height Cotter apexing late to try to get a run. Jensen wide as he climbs up onto the banking again. Look out, very tight at the exit of the corner. Now a drag race again. Wow, almost a classic over under, but he really got balked on the exit, did Height Cotter. That's the orange 370Z down the inside. He can get the low line through NASCAR one and two. Wow. They're going to be completely door handle to door handle. Watch this bump as they go through here. Do they move up a lane? Pound off the bump. No, they stay side by side, and the V8 comes back alive, this coming through NASCAR 2. Spectacular racing here. Door to door, side by side. FRS versus 370Z into the braking zone. Now, Height Cutter's got the overlap down the inside. Justin Kelly's licking his lips. He smells the blood in the water here for second. And look who's joining the battle. Joel Morrison is just in the back now in that black and green S2000. So now we now have a four car battle. So, such different cars as well. But Brian Height Cutter picks up that second spot, and he can set his vision forward on Jeremy Swenson, who's uh, just there now leaving into turn five. Well, Heikotter's pulling away quickly from Jensen, who's under attack now from Justin Kelly in the number 86 Myriad Motorsports car. Big climb oh. over the curb for the FRS. He got all out of shape there, Tom. Yeah, Justin Kelly was really dancing over that curb, and it's such a it's such a fine line between landing perfectly and landing uh, what the Russian judge would give you a 4-4 at the Olympics. <laughs> you get a really awkward bump there if you land wrong. But, wow, Heikotter just checked out. This is going to be a fast lap of the race, potentially. Uh, 102.5, that was just about even with Jeremy Swenson, so I think Heikotter's going to reel Swenson in. Jeremy's car is typically quickest at the start of the race, so it's going to fall back into the clutches of everyone else. Here's Morrison now following Ooh. Kelly, who's right down on the, the white line there on the inside of NASCAR 2. That's an interesting line to take there, Tom. There is a sweet spot to cross that bump, and they were a little too low for my liking. You saw how much it upset Joel Morrison's car, but the S2000 is known for how good it is on the brakes, especially in GLTC trim. And Morrison dancing on the brakes just as he comes off the pedal. It's looking like he's having Whoa. a little bit of a hard time with power down, even though that is only a K24 four-cylinder in that car. And uh, But he is starting to really put the pressure on Justin Kelly. So Kelly now closing back in on Jensen, who's kind of been the, the cork in the bottle here after the start of the race. He got an incredible launch, got through the gears really well, and then has struggled since then. So I'm not really sure what's up, but uh, he is definitely getting hounded. Two FRSs, both with not their stock motors. They're very different engines inside these cars. But I'm watching the two front runners, Tom, because that lead is coming down across the line. What's Swenson's time? It's going to be a 102.6. How about a 102.2? A half a second gain for Heidkotter. And that's the fast 
last lap of the race for the 370Z driver there. So he's going to be uh, on a ticking time bomb here, whether he can catch Swenson. Passing him is a whole other thing, but we're already th a third into this race. I was going to go back to Eric Jensen. You remember, he qualified fifth. Somehow he led down into turn number three on that first <laughs> lap. So whatever he did to his gearing really works on the start. But you're right, it's not so necessarily the fastest car on the racetrack right now. There is Jeremy Swenson. Big old tires on the rear of that thing, but they get hot quick when you're spinning them up on corner exit here. He is leading this race. This is his formula, right? Shoot out of the cannon, win the pole, run away. Uh, you know, he started second today and actually wasn't even leading until the exit of three. But now he's uh, getting run back down, which is how things always go. The question is, I think Highcutter's got enough time this time to get to him. Yeah, it's going to be a big question mark. Swenson's line is very, very uh, corner exit centric. You see him opening up the entry, trying to get a late apex, trying to get off the corner and lean into the power that that car has. Look at him cutting distance now on the banking. High Cotter <laughs> is visibly closer. It's not a, it's only a couple car lengths, but I would say that that 370 is closer. And once again, goes faster, resets the fast lap of the race at a 102 flat. And remember, race two is gridded on fast lap. High Cotter right now is the pole sitter for race two. And look at this, Jensen and uh, Justin Kelly. Look how Jensen pulls on the oval. He's gone in the oval section, but in the road course area in the infield he's really struggling it's just t tail of two cars for the the 184 right now yeah that's a the black car is a v8 the black and red is a v6 so neither of these cars are powered by their stock power plant even though they look very similar on the exterior uh joel morrison has not been able to close much up so this battle is kind of stagnated and you can guarantee they're pushing as hard as they possibly can you see how hard the cars are moving around but uh, nothing doing for any of these guys so far tiffany kelly's behind them a couple seconds back she's gained three spots since the drop of the green flag so we'll keep an eye on her as well if it gets a little frisky for third place up front though as we come up onto the oval uh to complete our sixth lap, uh, High Cutter was almost a second quicker. This lead is going to be essentially zero next time by, given the gap being 1.2 seconds. There it is. You can see them now only separated by about eight or nine car lengths here. Only two tenths better for High Cutter, though. At some point, the draft will start to take effect just a little bit. The big wing on the back of that Corvette, the hole it pokes in the air will only help the 370 get closer and closer as the race goes on. Uh, and he's not quite there. I think he needs to be about half cl uh, halfway closer than that. But once that 370 is within that po that hole that the Corvette is poking, uh, it's going to come down even quicker. Look how actually this field is getting very spread out in such a short race. It is. And uh, but dangle the carrot in front of Height Cotter a little bit more. I think he's still coming. we got a long way to go. Still 10 minutes left in this race. We're only six and a half minutes in. That's, what, two laps at Road America? America, so, so much racing left to go. Jorge Ortiz is just up the lane, a lap car. That could box Swenson just a little bit, depending on where he catches him. But getting really creative with the curbing here, trying to hook the car around. He missed that Ooh. one just a little bit. Yeah, and that, that really doesn't uh, doesn't pay off. You you think maybe the curbs upset the car. No, they actually helped the car here on the infield. There's a look at Jeremy Boysen. After he had that little bit of an off, he's made his way up through what is becoming a really cool battle for just inside the top 10. Colton Wade leading Bill Griffin and Felipe Gonzalez. Gonzalez there in the TLS 2000. Tons of pressure on the back of Bill Griffin, but Griffin has been here before uh, and has a little bit of experience in defending with that uh, Turner Motorsports BMW. Colton Wade has picked up, what is that now, f uh, three spots from, uh, from 12th to be 9th. Great battles going on even deep in the field here. Look at Felipe Gonzalez jumping up onto the curbing at the exit of turn nine to try to hook that car, but washes a little bit wide. Griffin staying a little bit tidier through that section. There is Jeremy Boysen, who's gotten that car rolling after that moment he had down in turn number three. Let's find the leaders because I think Height Cotter is just ed edging just slightly closer. Nine, uh, 95 hundredths of a second behind. So I think he's, well, he, it's sort of stagnated, Tom. I thought he was going to catch him quicker. Well. Don't forget, it's 130 degrees track temp out here. These cars are just going to be absolutely scrounging for grip. Oh, There's probably very little grip anywhere you go, but that looked like Heikotter really gained a lot in the last couple corners through turns 7, 8, and 9. Uh, it's kind of come back to Swenson, though. This is really interesting. The lines Swenson is taking to get back onto the banking make it look like he's slow, and then all of a sudden he's pulled Man, right back out. But he's chipping away at it, though, a tenth at a time. Heikotter up to about eight tenths back from Swenson. So he's still coming, just slower and slower every time. He's still got half the race left to get it done, and he's being very methodical about this. Maybe he knows that, hey, I shouldn't use up all my rear tire right now because I still have to get past Swenson. And actually, I got her gained a lot in the braking zone there as well. So uh, that was one of the things he was chasing was the braking performance on this car. Had some ABS lockup issues. Those seem to be essentially gone. Working lap number nine, as you mentioned, we crossed the nine-minute mark in this 15-minute sprint race, race one of four for this weekend. And each race builds on the previous one. So we mentioned already Brian Heikotter on fast.
fast lap of this race. We'll start on pole provisionally for the second race as it stands now. Now we see Jeremy Swenson getting a little bit more Whoa. frisky with the curves, but Hike Hunter, look at how <laughs> composed it looks when he uses that curve. Oh, he gained a ton. Big slide on entry to nine. That's going to cost him. You see him wow. wash the rear end out just a little bit. He was so aggressive into eight and nine. I think it might have cost him there just a little bit, but he felt the gain, Tom, so he might try that again. Yeah, you see that gain on the way in. Hike Hunter is rolling his entry speed, but then the back end got away from him. Swenson swinging way wide and then getting the power down. He builds so much distance on the front straightaway here as they cross the start finish line and that also bodes well for if this turns into a drag race i put my money on swenson i would i would put my money on swenson too it makes more noise so i that's <laughs> that's the one i would pick in a drag race into the turn two kink and on the brakes again it's just incremental closure height cutter here but I think you just got you got to be there uh, just once to open the door. And I think that'll, you know, if Swenson can just get in the marbles, that, that'll be all it takes. But to get there and get overlap, that's a real challenge in GLTC. The drivers are just too good. They don't make a lot of mistakes. Through the infield now, working lap number 10. As we, whoa, big moment there. Swenson is getting really aggressive on the left-hander at turn number five. And see if Hike Cotter is a little bit more composed this time. Tighter line. I think he figured out that whatever yeah. he did last time wasn't going to work. So he, he backed it up a little bit. And I think that was beneficial. Yeah, way cleaner. And that, this is the little zone where, where Swenson's car really stretches its legs. It's got a little bit more power overall, but it also makes really nice flat power. It could essentially be a CVT as far as I'm concerned. It just makes that power consistently all the way across the board. And it's really, really good for consistency. Hike Cotter, though, that time through, picked up another uh, little bit of time. I visibly would say he was closer as uh, you see across the line that time Swenson has officially dropped out of the 102s he hit 103 flat this time through yeah that was uh, it's still about a tenth of a, 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 a second a lap and you see height cutter it's just it's feet at a time this has got to be agonizing because you can you know the time is running out Tom you feel like you have to rush this but you're not even remotely close you can't dive bomb from that far back you, there's no way so he's got to just creep up and keep doing what he's doing when you're putting on events with so many different groups running we got to keep the time on schedule but height cutter looking like he's not going to have just an, not enough time to get to the back of Swenson, but he did his job. He ran the fast lap of the race. Here it is, the final corner. Does Swenson slip? Final corner, V8 versus V6. Jeremy Swenson from second on the front row comes out of turn number nine, and he'll add another victory to the several that he's gotten so far in 2021. The same old formula, Tom. Go out, run away. It worked. It almost didn't, though. Remember, Eric Jensen leapt to the lead early on. Swenson with a big braking maneuver down into turn three on that very first lap to take the lead back. That is the kind of racecraft that, I, ooh, ooh, I don't know, that's Eric Jensen stopped. That is well before the start-finish line as well. Yeah. I think looking across oh, the track towards turn number three. That breaks my heart because he was going to grab his first podium in GLTC. Now, they had just remanufactured that rear differential, uh, changed the ratio in it to make it a little bit taller geared for uh, the longer tracks like Road America, Mid-Ohio on the upcoming schedule. He's committed to running everything from here on out, I think, except for Heartland, and that might even be the one that he's running, but uh, out of power. Ooh, he's sideways, and I wonder. Well, th is that, that is... Um, it's probably just a little bit of brake smoke coming the, that you see there. I don't know if that's engine related, no, but I, out of the out of the tire well. I think uh, th uh, this is actually a cutout in the racetrack, so he's he's parallel to the track. I, I was worried he is, that he yeah, got this looped. Is just exit of turn uh, on the outside of turn number three. So he's been uh, he's been out of the battle for third for over half a lap, uh, which does promote Justin Kelly up to third. So that's your podium, Swenson, High Cotter, Kelly. The question is, the car looks completely fine. Obviously, yeah. we see Jensen moving inside the car. Uh, doing the right thing by not getting out until everybody's clear of the track, but uh, that's a heartbreaker. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he's way down there. So you have to wonder if it was some kind of, oh, he's, he was kind of backwards the direction travel. Maybe there was a brake issue and he backed it around and, and looped it. It's possible if he's pulling, just waiting to get back onto the track and maybe the car stalled or something. The good news is if it's car going to run, if the car is going to run within the next two hours, the next race is at 6.40 p.m. Uh, e uh, Mountain time. Does that I sound about right? He's mm. got about two hours regardless. Uh, two hours to Six fix ten. that car, and he will get to stand on his fast lap of the race, which will put him back well up into the field. He'll get to race for that podium once again, but it does, you know, it does suck to, to lose it on the last lap. He will actually start fifth uh, if well, uh, if that car will run. Worked for him last time. It, it did. <laughs> uh, we'll have a look at some replays from the race here. Wild start. Great couple laps. Yeah, I really want to see how this – well, we're not going to get to see it necessarily, but into the braking zone and watch Swenson around the outside. We were focused on the cars on the inside because oh, of how close that got. Holy Swenson cow. <laughs> deep on the brakes, just surprised oh. everybody and basically had the pass done by the, turn, by the time they turned in. Yeah, that was a really – well, well, that was a, a sketchy a situation. It looked like the track kind of condenses and compresses, and it just 
It's wide enough for three, but oh. that was a tight compression there between Jensen and Height Cutter. That was almost a moment there. There, there might be uh, some scraps of paint from traded from one to the other, but that's racing sometimes. Big curb climbs. These two are going at it all race. Yeah, Jensen really didn't get a break. He did a fantastic job, though, defending in the section of the track that he is not the, the fastest in due to his car, uh, we suspect. But then once they get back up onto that banking, <laughs> he would always pull away from Justin Kelly, and it almost worked for him. Kelly, there you see uh, defending from Joel Morrison, who really didn't get to ch the chance uh, to enter this battle very much, but he turned the third fastest lap of the race, and we'll get another go at it as well. I, I like where he's going to start. He'll be P3 for race number two later today at 6.10 p.m. Mountain Time. There is the battle between Swenson and Heitkotter. Again, it was just car lengths of separation. Tom, it just it, there was just not quite enough time, but I think Heitkotter was in a, got put in such a bad spot on the opening lap. I think if he has room to be more aggressive he might be he might get out front i think if he can pass swenson it's game over yeah he will uh, he'll certainly have learned something I, I was hoping to see back towards the very start of the green flag and see why did that front row and Je the both front row guys got such a terrible start for someone from fifth to come and pass you uh on a, on a flat out run like that there, something went wrong for those two guys um but whether they were in in the wrong gear whatever it is Awesome to see Eric Jensen doesn't even have to go fix his car in the next two hours. It's already running <laughs> well, again. Well, hopefully. I mean, we yeah. don't know what, what led to that, but he is rolling now, so that's great to see. Uh, and he will head back to the paddock, and we're going to go get that story before our second race uh, in about an hour and a half. So, race one complete. Oh, man, deep breath. You don't get a lot of a breath around here, for sure. You certainly do not. Whether you're in the booth or on the track, no. you do not get a little bit of a breath. Uh I mean, we are pretty high altitude, so maybe that's Yeah, it. yeah I'm, I'm out of breath just walking up a flight of stairs out here. Maybe that's uh, altitude or something else. But uh, Brian, or Jeremy Swenson adds a, a victory to his list of wins. Uh, just checking the points right now to, to check how many times he has won. That would be his fourth win. That ties the most all, uh, which is yourself and your teammate Andy Smedgard. So there are three drivers now that hold, that hold four victories on the 2021 season. Interestingly, uh, this is the uh, the most diverse uh, amount of winners that we've had in a GLTC season. They've been spread quite significantly across the top 10 of the points. Lichty with three, Cattill with two, McGrew with two, Swenson with four, Smedgard and yourself, four each. And uh, I think there was another one. Uh, Dyson Pham had one back at NOLA. Uh, so there, the wins have been spread around, and uh, everyone gets a little bit of the love here this season. But when push comes to shove, uh, you're going to have to tune in to the later races throughout the season to find out who gets that overall championship. Well, and if I learn anything, you got to show up first. <laughs> but anyway, I think looking into race number two, again, gridded off a fast lap. It's not going to jumble the grid order too much. It looks very similar to qualifying. But what we've got to look for is those two guys on the front row. They get another shot at it, but they cannot slip again because everybody else just learned a lot as well. Joel Morrison, I think, has the pace. If he cannot get swallowed up just a little bit less, he probably got balked by the front two not going at the start. Uh, he is certainly a contender if he can stay in front of the guys he got stuck behind, Kelly and Jensen. Uh, race two could look exactly the same. It could look totally different. You should come watch. Thank you.